Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So many of you will be familiar with the subject of back scabbards. Now I don't have a back scabbard to demonstrate because back scabbards weren't really a very popular thing. Now it's not to say that back scabbards didn't exist historically, they, they did in certain scenarios. It seems like for transportation purposes sometimes swords were carried on the back and in some places um, perhaps it was done. I'm not going to get into the subject of back scabbards right now but what I am going to get into um, is something which is in a way related um, and it's a method of wearing the sword which is extremely simple and was done historically in quite a lot of places and I'm going to use the example of this Burmese Da. Now we have looked at this sword before of course and it sits in usually in the corner behind me but you'll notice that it has a very simple cord. Now this is actually a suspension system which we see on earlier, um, prehistoric actually, a classical era and, and um, potentially even Bronze Age um, swords and uh, in addition ethnographically it's been used as a method of wearing and carrying um, in many many different cultures. Um, we find it in Southeast Asia but we also to look to a completely different part of the world but at the same period. We also find it in the Sudan for example. We find it with the Kaskara um, and we even find this sort of method sometimes used with the Tukuba as well. Um, so in, in that part of Africa this was a way of wearing a sword. Now very clearly it's very um, simple, it's simple to make and I'm going to talk about how convenient it is in a minute but additionally it's it's also very convenient for people who aren't necessarily wearing belts. Now if you think about it, belts, um, in a modern context, belts are usually used to hold your trousers up, aren't they? But of course, in um, if you look at medieval Europe, for example, a belt for the most part goes around your waist, not around your hips. Um, and performs a slightly different function because it goes around your waist, around your thinnest part in other words with your hips below, you can suspend a sword from it quite conveniently and that's the obvious place to hang swords and daggers and various other things, pouches and all sorts of things from. But if you're talking about a place where they're not wearing belts around their middle, um, or indeed they don't want to wear a, a, you know, a belt for, for reasons of convenience um, because, of the, because of the lifestyle they have, maybe they're living in uh, dense, densely forested areas or mountainous areas or they're um, dealing with um, sort of getting on and off um, animals quite a lot, mountain, you know, horses and stuff like this, there might be various reasons why you don't want a sword flopping around low down at your side and that's where this comes into it as well. So not only is it a very simple way of wearing a sword but it's actually really really convenient way and uh, to go back to why I mentioned back scabbards at the beginning it's because I think that uh, movie and TV um, film we makers, makers of films and makers of TV shows have kind of missed, missed a trick in a way in that they often seem to stick um, swords on people's backs, partly because this is what's done in comic books and anime and everything else like that. You know, everyone knows that a ninja wears their sword on their back, do they? Um, and, uh, and for some reason they think this looks cool. Incidentally, I'll probably talk about back quivers as well, that is for arrows at some point. Um, back quivers did exist, um, but they were nowhere near as common as you might think if you take your knowledge from just watching TV or movies. Um, uh, side quivers were far more common, just in the same way that wearing swords at the side was far more common. But this is a kind of this is kind of kind of wearing the sword at your side, but it's kind of like wearing it on your back as well. And it's very simple to, to um, make one of these. If you've, you've got any kind of um, loop or strap or anything, you can attach it to a scabbard at two points, one at the top, one about a third or halfway down. And all you do is you just simply, depending which side you want to wear it on, I want to wear it on my left side because that's what I'm most used to. You stick your uh, arm on that side through and then stick it over your head and bam, it's, it's done. It's that easy to get it on and off. And it's actually really, really convenient place to wear a sword and you can wear it at various different angles. You could wear it sticking up or just by pulling the strap around a bit, just stand up a bit so you can see a bit lower, it hangs more horizontally so you can very easily adjust it. You can easily switch it from hang it having the edge at the front to having the edge uh, upwards or backwards, whichever you prefer. Obviously 
We all know that uh, katanas, for example, in Japan are generally worn edge up, although tashis are worn edge down. Um, and various other cultures prefer to wear their swords edge up or edge down. Obviously, if it's a double-edged sword, that point is moot because there is no up and down. The, you have one edge up and one edge down. Um, but if you think about someone who's living in um, the forests of, of somewhere like um, Borneo, if you look at uh, Bornean headhunters, for example, or indeed if you look at Burma, if you look at Burmese people living in forests, this is a very, very convenient way to wear a sword because your hands are completely free. It doesn't flop around much. It doesn't stick down low. So if you're climbing over stuff or moving through foliage, bushes, stuff like this, or climbing over logs, it's not going to get in the way. Um, it's super quick to get on and off. It doesn't require any other um, clothing items. Now that's very important because of course if you're living in a jungle then for the most part you're not going to be wearing lots of clothes. Um, so if you're just wearing a grass skirt or whatever um, or you know some kind of loincloth or something then this is fine. It, it can go over your naked body. You don't need any other clothing items in order to make this work. And it's also super accessible. It's, it's close to both hands, can easily and quickly get to it and incidentally can pull the thing either point down if it was a weapon that you would want to do that with or very easily draw it point up. You can do both very very quickly and it brings it quickly up into a defensive uh, position up where you might be wanting to use the thing. Um, so it's really, um, you know, it's just a super convenient place to wear a sword. And um, as I say, we do get hints of this kind of wearing system um, in in earlier periods in in the classical era and we sometimes see and really if we think about it if we go into medieval and renaissance europe this is essentially like what's called a baldric now what is a baldric a baldric is essentially this but it's usually a wide leather strap but if you actually look at a baldric and we're not talking about a black adder here but that is where the word baldric comes from a baldric is a sword belt the baldric is worn diagonally across the body and it was particularly popular in the 17th century, funnily enough, despite n not really being very popular in, um, in earlier centuries. Um, but the baldric of the 17th and 18th century um, is a highly functional thing and fun functionally it's the same as this. It's the same as Burmese swordsmen were using, very similar to what Bornean headhunters were doing with their mandal swords. Uh, equally similar to what the Sudanese were doing with their cascaras um, and, and it, you know it's a really versatile way of, way of wearing a sword. Right I'm not going to witter on for much longer but there we go and maybe some of you are not familiar with this and hopefully you are now um, and I will try to find I think in the future I might talk a little bit more about this and I'll dig out some ethnographic examples photos paintings illustrations showing various different cultures of people wearing these but as a quick video I thought that would be a good introduction to the uh, to the topic and also just to reiterate once again that the the whole wearing on the back thing whilst it was I won't say it was never done historically, it was incredibly rarely done historically. And this method was vastly, vastly more common across cultures, across periods, of, across thousands of years, or at least hundreds of years. Yeah, thousands probably if we push it. Um, and, and really, we should be seeing this more in movies and TV than swords worn on backs. And it's highly more practical and highly more historically correct. Cheers, folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook, 
You can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.